Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into some more fascinating stuff. Always up for a deep dive. What are we exploring today? Well, last time we scratched the surface of gaming simulation, right? Yeah, we got our feet wet. Exactly. Now we're going deeper, unpacking part two of Unpacking the Journey. Insights into the Nature of Gaming Simulation by George Otoyu. Sounds intriguing. What's Otoyu got for us this time? He gets into like the really nuanced stuff. Like we throw around words like game and simulation all the time, but a two of you really makes you stop and think, is it really that simple? I can already tell this is going to be good. Those simple sounding questions, they often lead to the most mind bending discussions. Totally. So he kicks things off with this definition of gaming simulation. He borrows it from Paolo Rizzi and it's a bit of a mouthful. Hit me with it. Okay. Ready? It's about creating a model of reality. But then you've got game rules and players making choices within those rules. And all of that creates this dynamic map. Okay, I see why you said mouthful. Let's unpack that. Yeah, it's a lot to process, right? It is, but it makes sense. It's like imagine trying to capture the essence of, say, how cities evolve. You can't just take a picture. Right, a picture's frozen in time. Exactly. You need a way to show the constant change, the push and pull. So this definition, it's saying... A gaming simulation is like a living, breathing model. You've got the rules of the game setting the boundaries. The players are making decisions within those boundaries. And it's their choices that shape how things unfold. Exactly. It's not just simple cause and effect. It's a whole web of interactions. Like a butterfly effect almost. Kind of. And this is where Otoe gets into this whole game versus gaming thing. Okay, yeah. He makes this distinction between the actual structure of the game, hmm. the board, the pieces, whatever, and the act of playing it which is where the simulation part really comes in. And that's Hugh GE, because that leads him to argue that gaming simulations, they're actually a form of educational game. Which is interesting, because when we think educational, we don't always think fun, but games can be both. Totally. Like, I can have Monopoly sitting on my shelf. Until I open it, it's just a box of potential. But when we actually play it... It becomes this whole experience. Right. We're making decisions. We're experiencing, you know, the thrills and spills of that simulated economy. And that's gaming, the actual engagement with the system. And Otoe reminds us that games are voluntary. We choose to play them, even when we rage quit. Exactly. There are rules, sure, but we find this inherent sense of reward in the act of playing, in the challenge. And it's not always about winning or losing, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's about the experience itself. 100%. Think about those games where you get so sucked in, hours just vanish. It's because that act of playing, that engagement, is just that inherently rewarding. Which makes me think about what Otoya says about escapism. Games can be this outlet, right? Absolutely. They give us a sense of agency, a way to make choices and see the impact of those choices in a way that we might not always experience in our everyday lives. Which brings us to the really juicy part. Part of the debate, right? Yeah. Are games and simulations fundamentally different things? Or are simulations just a supercharged version of game? Okay, so which is it? Well, Otoyu, he lays out both sides of the argument, which I appreciate. On one hand, he talks about how you can think of games and simulations as existing on a spectrum. Okay, I like visuals, so like a Venn diagram. Perfect. Games on one side, simulations on the other, and this big overlapping area in the middle. Where things get blurry. Right. So this perspective, it suggests that simulations, they're just a specific type of game. But then Otoyu throws us a curveball. He says, some people argue that games and simulations, they're fundamentally different. Like comparing apples and oranges. Exactly. This viewpoint, it emphasizes that, yeah, games have rules and objectives, but they're primarily about competition, right? You're trying to outmaneuver someone or something. But simulations, they're all about reflecting how messy and unpredictable reality actually is. Which can be frustrating, but also way more true to life. Oh, totally. You know, this whole debate reminds me of this historical simulation game I played once. Mm -hmm. It was so immersive. I got so caught up in the choices I had to make. Like, should I send troops here or invest in new technology there? And every decision had these ripple effects. Exactly. It didn't even feel like playing a game. It felt like I was experiencing a piece of history, you know, wrestling with those real world dilemmas. And that's a perfect example of a simulation blurring those lines, making us question where the game ends and reality begins. But to understand why that distinction even matters, Otoyu says we need to dig into the specific ways they differ. Okay, so what are the key differences then? What sets a simulation apart? Well, games are often driven by that desire to win, right? 
to achieve some objective. Simulations, though, they're more about exploring consequences. Like the journey is as important as the destination. More like the journey, I guess the destination in a way. Because in a simulation, sometimes there's no winning. It's about seeing how different choices play out, understanding the chain of cause and effect. So it's not always about finding the right answer, but understanding the complexities. Exactly. Like the difference between following a script and improvising on stage, right? Yeah. One is predictable, the other is full of surprises. Exactly. And that brings us to another key difference, the rules. In a game, they're usually set in stone, like break them, you face the music. But in simulations, the rules are more like guidelines. More flexible to reflect the real world. Precisely. They influence the relationships within the system, how different elements interact. But they don't dictate every single outcome. Exactly. There's room for emergence, for the unexpected to happen, which, let's face it, is what makes life interesting, right? This whole discussion, it makes me think about game theory. You know, like in that movie, A Beautiful Mind. Oh, interesting connection. I see where you're going with this. Is there a link there between gaming simulation and game theory? There is, actually. Otoo talks about that. Like, game theory, it's all about strategy. Figuring out the best move to make, given what your opponent might do. Exactly. And you can definitely see parallels in gaming simulations, especially those with a strong strategic element. But, and this is important, Otoo argues that traditional game theory, it often makes a big assumption. What's that? It assumes people are always perfectly rational in their decision making. Like we're all running these complex algorithms in our heads trying to maximize our gains. Which, let's be honest, most of us aren't. Exactly. Human beings, we're messy. Emotions, biases, gut feelings, these all factor into our choices. And thankfully so, right? Otherwise, life would be pretty boring. Totally. And that's what simulations, good simulations at least, capture. That beautiful messiness of human behavior. Gaming simulation, it's not about predicting outcomes with perfect accuracy. It's about creating a space to explore the nuances of how we make decisions in the real world, warts and all. Okay, so we've talked about definitions and this whole game versus simulation debate. But how do we actually wrap our heads around all these different interpretations? Is it like a framework or a model we can use to make sense of it all? There is. And this is where Otoyu introduces what he calls his favorite model. And it's all about categorizing gaming simulations based on their function. Okay, so what are these different categories? Give me the rundown. At one end of the spectrum, you have pure games. The classics. Chess. Tag. Even something like Monopoly. Those are all about entertainment, right? Fun. Competition. Exactly. Clear rules. A defined objective. Right. The focus is on the game itself. Then on the other end of the spectrum. We have pure simulations, and these are all about learning and training. Like flight simulators for pilots. Perfect example. Or those high fidelity simulations they use for air traffic control training. They're designed to mirror real world scenarios as closely as possible. So people can practice skills and make mistakes without you know, real world consequences. Exactly. And what's interesting is that the line between a game and a simulation, it's not always so clear cut. Think about something like a surgical simulation. Where surgeons can practice complex procedures. Right. It's a training tool, a simulation, but there's also a game-like element to it with challenges and objectives. So we've got our pure games on one end, pure simulations on the other. What about the middle ground? Ah, that's where we get into hybrid territory. Think about city building games like SimCity. A classic. Right. They're entertaining for sure, but they also give you a taste of what it's like to manage resources, plan infrastructure, grapple with like urban planning dilemmas. You're engaging with systems thinking in a way that's both fun and surprisingly insightful. It's like sneaking in a little education without even realizing it. Exactly. And Otoyu emphasizes that these categories, they're not meant to be rigid boxes. There's a lot of fluidity between them. It's more like a spectrum with lots of shades in between. Precisely. And that brings us to a really important question. Why should we even care about this distinction? Why does it matter if something is labeled a game or a simulation or falls somewhere in between? Right, that's the heart of it, isn't it? Yeah. What's the takeaway for the average person who's not a game designer or a simulation expert? It all boils down to understanding the unique power of each approach. 
games, simulations, even those hybrid forms, they each offer something different. They each have their own strengths and limitations. Exactly. And recognizing those differences, it allows us to make more informed choices about how we use these tools, whether it's for entertainment, education, or even tackling complex real world problems. Speaking of real world problems, yeah. Otoyu introduces this really intriguing idea towards the end of this section, something about finite and infinite games. Ah, uh, yes. That's a great segue into the next part of our discussion. Are you ready to dive into that now? Okay, finite versus infinite games. Hit me with it. All right, so imagine a football game. Clear winner, clear loser, set time limit. Exactly, finite game. It has a beginning and end, a set of rules everyone agrees to, and the goal is to, well, win. Okay, makes sense. So what's an infinite game then? Think about something like, I don't know, maintaining a healthy ecosystem. There's no winning that, really. It's an ongoing process. Precisely. And that's a toy's point. He's saying yeah. that a lot of the challenges we face today, they're not finite games. There's no finish line, no single solution that solves everything. So how does this tie back to simulations? Because if we approach simulations with a finite game mindset, we're missing the point. Like, we're so focused on finding the right answer, we miss the bigger picture. Exactly. Simulations, they're not about predicting the future. They're about helping us understand complex systems, explore possibilities, grapple with uncertainty. So it's more about the process, the journey of exploration and discovery, than reaching some predetermined destination. Exactly. And as we use simulations more and more in fields like education, policymaking, even scientific research, that shift in mindset from finite to infinite becomes crucial because the real world doesn't play by finite game rules. Exactly, it's messy, it's unpredictable, and if we want to use simulations effectively, we have to enforce that. It's like, instead of looking for the optimal solution, we should be aiming for robust solutions that can adapt to changing circumstances. Absolutely, we need to be comfortable with iterating, experimenting, being wrong sometimes, because that's how we learn. That's how we grow. Yeah. And that's how we make better decisions in a world that's constantly evolving, which, when you think about it, what's that? It makes life itself seem like the ultimate infinite game, doesn't it? I like that. We're all just players in this grand, messy, infinitely fascinating simulation we call reality. Maybe that's the biggest takeaway from all of this. That gaming simulation, it's not just about entertainment or education. It's a way of thinking, a way of making sense of the world around us. Beautifully said. It's about embracing complexity, experimenting, and never stopping the journey of exploration. Couldn't put it better myself. <laughs> Big thanks to George Otoy for giving us so much to think about. Seriously, this article series is a goldmine. For everyone listening, if you want to dive deeper into this topic, and trust me, you do, be sure to check out Otoyu's full article series. We'll drop a link in the show notes. Until next time, keep playing, keep questioning, and keep exploring the infinite possibilities of Tudwell.everything.